Well, guys, it's uh, graduation season coming up now. Teenagers across the country are going to be graduating from high school and college. And that means it's time to address Jeremiah 29 11. Now, um, a while back, let's see, podcast 127, Confusing Bible Verses. That's one that I did with Knuckles last year. Go back and check that one out if you want more on this topic. We really spent some time on it, but I thought I'd give you guys just a quick reminder about an important truth. This is foundational for Christianity. We have to understand this. We have to get this right because so many people go way off course when they misinterpret it. So let's talk about this. Jeremiah 29, 11, probably the most crocheted Bible verse there is. It's in lots of graduation cards and letters and plaques and certificates and pillows and blankets that we give our graduates. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Oh, man, that sounds good, right? We all want that to be talking to us. Problem is, when we tell that verse to our kids or loved ones, we're taking that verse out of context because that verse was not written to us. There are no verses in the Bible, as a reminder. All those little numbers were put there later. That passage, Jeremiah 29, 11, Jeremiah is writing a letter that God has instructed him to write to the Jewish captives in Babylon. So a bunch of people were carted off and taken as prisoner to a foreign land. And Jeremiah was telling them this message from God that I will prosper you. Hang in there. I have plans to not crush you in this captivity. That's who that was written for. So we can't just pull a sentence that we like out of the Bible and then say, oh, this is evidence that God has plans to prosper you. No, it doesn't work that way. Um, That's not God's promise to us. That was God's promise to the Jewish captives in Babylon. The other verse that gets pulled out of context quite a bit, very similar. Uh, This comes from 1 Corinthians 10, 13. You will hear people say, God will never give you more than you can handle. Don't forget, God will never give you more than you can handle. First of all, that's not what that verse says. Um, Second of all, it doesn't make any sense common sense. Um, If God didn't give us more than we could handle, we wouldn't die. He gives us stuff we can't handle that kills us. He gives us cancer. He gives us heart attacks. He gives us strokes. He gives us car wrecks. He gives us death, divorce, hardship, trials. I want you to think about everything that the Apostle Paul went through. He was beaten with rods, he was whipped, he was stoned, he was shipwrecked, he was hungry, he was cold, he was in jail. He rattles through a whole list of all of the hardships that he went through in Philippians. God gives everyone more than they can handle. Paul was beheaded in prison. That was more than he could handle. Peter was crucified upside down. That was more than he could handle. Jesus was killed on a cross. Our whole message of Christianity is, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Those are the words of Jesus. We're told, if the world hated me, it will hate you more. We're told, take up your cross and follow me. Everything is about, you're going to have hardships. So don't get thrown off faith. Don't get thrown off course. Don't get rattled when you're given more than you can handle, when plans don't work out to prosper you. Remember, that promise was not to us. Remember, the verse from Corinthians is taken out of context. God doesn't say, I won't give you more than you can handle. He said, I won't. There will be, never be more temptation than you can handle without me providing a way out. So whenever we feel tempted, whenever we feel tempted to do something, 
we can always find a way out of giving in to that temptation. That's what Paul is writing in Corinthians. To say God won't give you more than you can handle is an absolute lie. So why is this so important? Well, because if we buy in to this belief that God has plans to prosper you and not harm you, and he'll never give you more than you can handle, if we buy in to that false version of Christianity, then we've set ourselves up to be susceptible to falling away from faith when those hard times do actually overtake us. When we are overcome with disaster, if we thought we were buying into a faith that would make life easier and better, well, then we might turn away from that false version that we originally signed up for in the first place. But if you, if you give your life to Christ and his word from God in the Bible, you won't fall from it because you will be subscribed to the authentic, real version of Christianity, the one that promises trouble and hardship, the one that Paul and Peter and John and Timothy and James all followed. Philip, Nathaniel, these men were all killed. Paul was dipped in boiling oil before he was exiled to an island prison. James was thrown off of the pinnacle of the temple, and then when he laid there broken, he wasn't dead, and they smashed his head with a rock. These men all were given more than they could handle. That does not mean God forsook them. Uh, it doesn't mean that um, you know they ever felt anything less than the presence of God. We know as Christians. We are not living for this world. We're living for the next one. So we know in this world we'll have trouble, but that's okay because our hope is in the next one. Guys, don't forget that. This graduation season, don't fall prey to Jeremiah 29, 11. Don't set your kids up for a prosperity gospel that's going to promise them good times and never getting more hardship than they can handle because you'll be setting them up to turn their back on it when it doesn't pan out that way. Thanks, guys.